Hi, 7th grade, Mr. Pastel here. Today I'm going to guide you through our first les lesson of plate motion. So scroll down to here, click on plate motion. We're actually going to skip the pre-assessment um, today. We're gonna start with 1.2. That's because um, to start off, I think it's a bit more fun to learn a little bit of something rather than just give you a bunch of multiple choice. But I think we'll do that tomorrow, that pre-assessment. So I'm going to click on 1.2. The warm-up asks, basically, what do you already know about fossils? Um, and it says up here, fossils include fossilized bones, footprints, leaf prints, so it's not just bones, which is what we think of when we go to a place like the Museum of Natural History, but it's other things too. And we'll talk about that later. Um, and use these images to help. Like, what do you know about how to uncover bones? What do you know about bones of animals? What do you know about, or fossils of animals? What do you know about fossils of plants? So just what, what do you already know? No wrong answers there. And let's move forward. I will play this video for you. So this is the right arm of a sauropod dinosaur, a long-necked dinosaur called Jobaria. And so if you were to think of this animal as it were alive, you would just bring these bones up like this and then put the upper arm bone on top of it and you'd have an animal that was pretty tall. My name is Jeff Wilson, and I'm a paleontologist at the University of Michigan. And uh, paleontologists study the history of life, both past and present. And one of the things that I've focused on over the years has been the reptiles of the dinosaur era. Just this February, I went with a team to India. And we went to India with the idea of understanding what India looked like at the end of the dinosaur era. Walking around, looking at the ground as we do as paleontologists, I noticed that there was a little tiny, tiny bit of a shell sticking out. It was something that looked like a shell. And realized that it was a shell of the baby turtle. And that baby turtle was uh, still partly in the rock and still partly exposed. So we carefully dug around it with some tools and brought it out. And then we opened it up in the safety of the lab where we have all the tools, all the equipment we need to very carefully clean up the turtle. Our preparator sits with the fossil under microscope and removes that rock very carefully. And every day I go in and check on the progress. Hey, Bill. Hey, Jeff. How's the turtle coming? So I'm running on the bone here. Oh, wow. Can I take a look? Yeah, sure. Our turtle, when it gets cleaned up, will go into a museum collection. Here at the University of Michigan, our Museum of Paleontology has a large collection of fossils. So for instance, if I'm studying a snake, I can just go downstairs into our collections, open up a drawer that has fossil snakes of a similar time period in them, take those fossils out, bring them up to my office, and I can study those snakes and the snakes that I've collected side by side. So this fossil snake is interesting because it's an early fossil snake, but it's also interesting because it was preserved caught in the act of eating a hatchling dinosaur. So it was found in a nest with dinosaur eggs next to a dinosaur hatchling, and it was coiled around the eggs and prepared, we think, to eat the hatchling when it was suddenly covered up by sediment very quickly, rapidly, capturing it, freezing it in that paleo instant. When we study um, a fossil on a fossil site, we're not only interested in the, the bones and the traces themselves, but we're also interested in the geological context, how it was buried and what it was buried in. And in the case of this ancient snake from India, we can learn a lot just from looking at the sediments. So these sediments tell us that the dinosaur nest was made in the sandy margins of a river, and the plug of sediment that was on top of this seems to have been something that was loosened during a storm where a, 
a large clot of debris covered this up very quickly. So fossils like these tell us not only about the organisms themselves, but also about Earth's geologic past. Paleontology involves doing a lot of puzzling, sort of mental puzzling, and even sometimes physical puzzling when we're putting specimens together. And so if you're interested in trying to understand how things got to be the way they are, then paleontology may be the kind of discipline that you should go into. So that was a real paleontologist, not an actor. And something that he said is that fossils can be sound, found only in sedimentary rock, which is important. We just learned all the different types of rock, but they can only be found in sedimentary rock. Now we're going to read about um, kind of a mystery that we're solving, which is about a, a sea creature called Mesosaurus, and I will play that for you as well. The ancient Mesosaurus. Scientists can use the fossils of an extinct creature called the Mesosaurus to study Earth's past. They find these fossils embedded in hard, solid rock. Mesosaurus fossils have been found in South America and Africa. Mesosaurus means middle lizard, and these creatures were ancient lizards that looked a bit like small crocodiles with narrow heads and long tails. They had webbed feet and grew to about 1 meter, 3.3 feet long. The earliest fossil evidence for these animals indicates that they were alive about 300 million years ago, and their species went extinct about 260 million years ago. Mesosaurus were among the first reptiles to live in and around water, and they spent most of their lives in the water. However, their bodies weren't built for swimming long distances, so they stayed close to land. Like all reptiles, Mesosaurus had lungs instead of gills, and breathed in oxygen from the air instead of getting it underwater. Their nostrils were located high up, allowing them to breathe air through their nostrils while the rest of their bodies stayed underwater. So oftentimes we see pictures of dinosaurs that are massive, but Mesosaurus was smaller than a crocodile. Um, it did not have gills, it had lungs. So here's the mystery that I want you guys to um, give your first guess how it happened. You can find Mesosaurus fossils in this part of South America, and you can find Mesosaurus fossils in this part of Africa. And if they can't swim across the Atlantic Ocean, what's your explanation for this? Um, I've had a student ask me in the past, is this to scale? No, Mesosaurus is not half the size of South America or Africa. So the question is, how do you have fossils so far apart if there's an Atlantic Ocean in between them? Moving forward, um, we're going to very quickly look at some cross sections. It's like if you cut Earth-like slices of cake, um, what would you see inside? So here's our first cross section of Earth in Colorado. Um, so on the top, you have hard solid rock formations formed during volcanic eruptions. So obviously that's igneous. That's what we learned last unit. And we have a huge layer of hard solid rock formed from sediments. So what is that? That's sedimentary rock as we learned last unit. And that's what the Colorado Plateau looks like when you, and then they drilled into it. Um, back in Hawaii, Mauna Loa is all igneous rock. And there are some core samples. If you go to Project Mohol, drilled into the bottom of the ocean off the coast of Mexico. Um, so first you have obviously the ocean layer, then you have sediment, not sed sedimentary rock, but sediment, and igne a small layer of igneous rock here. This is where they drilled. And finally, in Antarctica, you have to drill through some ice, then you have a layer of water, where there's probably living things, then you have 
sedimentary rock, then you have igneous rock. So, all of these have, include Earth's outermost layer of hard solid rock. That outermost layer is underneath soil, plants, and water. So this is another question um, where we, I just want to see your understanding. Um, the question is, the question is, where is Earth's outer layer made of hard, solid rock? If you, if I gave you a map. So on this map, where is Earth's outer layer made of hard, solid rock? Um, instead of actually coloring it in, you can just describe it with writing. And that is it for today. Thank you.